post this video. Because Brandon's a good person. Or now I can just... Nice job, high four. One shot, one kill. Ronnie did. Now introducing your butthole podcast, Scott, the great Brandino, Gage's Rage, and Star Lamar. What's up, girl? I love the butthole. Who doesn't love the butthole? Welcome in, everybody, to episode number 224. This is the going home episode. <laughs> So technically, the last one was the penultimate. Yes. And now this is the going home episode before we cover the NFL draft live Thursday and Friday night for the Blue Collar Media Group. Gage's Rage and I were just talking about how we don't even recognize the fourth member of the butthole from that video we have because he looks so much different now than he did last summer. I just, yeah, Scott, did you shine your head or? No, I put on a lot of weight since then. Is that what it is? Yep. I it's definitely coming out of winter and I kind of take what most bears take as in when you go into winter, you got to bulk up like a grizzly bear. We know uh, what it is. You're in rut. You're looking for your, your mate. I'm fucking always in rut, dude. <laughs> God, I usually start in like April, May to get ready for the fall and winter. Oh, that's it's a good a smart idea. Try, I try get that a head start on it. Yeah. I'm still waiting to get ready for 2025. So bulking up. <laughs> I'm a, I'm on I'm on par. In the words of the great Gage's Rage, poop is lube. <laughs> We're not living that one down, huh? No one, <laughs> no one else here said anything they regret on the podcast ever. No, oh no, I've said shit. Maybe just this is you're just not the, the list of shit. We're that's the black this list. Is, th- yeah, yeah. You don't want to be on this list. Okay? You're not the motherfucker who said he hit the end of Pornhub. Okay, <laughs> poop might be lube, but. If you made the end of Pornhub, you've seen plenty of poop. And used why is anime the last suggestion on your fucking end of the list? That should I didn't be like think I'd be into five it. Five or dude. six. I didn't think I'd be into it, man. Is that a journal? What did it's his? Don't flip any more pages, okay? <laughs> it's a, where it's he draws naked but- pictures of the butthole cast. <laughs> I know we don't, we won't remember this one, but uh, there's a lot of butthole five notes from in here. So is that but, a thing? Um, believe it or not, this oh. is not the poop is lube podcast. Butthole time. This is the unveiling of the butthole's mm-hmm. top 100 compiled by me. Yeah, this is not. I'm just going to jump out ahead of you here, Scott. This is not the butthole's top 100. Well, it's the only one we have. This so. is Scott. <laughs> Technically. Scott from the buttholes. Top, top 100. 100. Yeah, I we're gonna, this one. We're going to open it up for dissection. That's because you only know 15 people group. are on it. <laughs> what? 15? That's pretty good. But Gage, before, hold on. before we start, Gage, name 15 players in this year's upcoming draft. Star will give you a dollar for each correct answer over 15. Actually? No. Okay. <laughs> and also, before Brandon pulls it up and puts it on the screen, <laughs> I want to play a game with you guys really quick that I actually compiled. And I talked it over with Brandon about playing it, if you'll remember. I remember you talking over playing a game. Is it about where uh, previous players in the draft went to college? No, it's yeah. current existing players, and it compi- we're going to play it this way. Okay. First person to get three strikes is officially the loser. The loser's the loser. There will be no winner. You're just a loser. Okay. That's a fun game to play. Everybody loses. No, nope. the name of this game. No, Gage the first loses? person to get three strikes loses. That's just how it's going to work. I think every game is called the Star Lamar. We're going to start with. I just not answer. Let other people fight pick a number strikes. one through one hundred. This will be the pick order. Sixty nine. I got it. Check the tape. Sixty. Can you go over? Yep. You can go over. Just close. Sixty eight. Okay, so the number was twenty seven. So Star Lamar is closest. Well, he I, will go first. We both get sixty nine. Yeah, you two will go second and third respectively. Rock paper scissors for it or fingernail fight. Shoot. Obviously. Okay. Rock paper scissors shoot. Fucking a. Two so Brandon will go. No, 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 no. Actually, no, no. <laughs> reverse what I just said. Brandon will go first because he technically lost. Gage yeah. will go second. Star will go third. First person to get There's three minutes. out loses. Here is question number one. Tom Brady. So to he the has great brand answer. He has to answer. Right, it's not for us. Got and it. it's multiple choice. Brandon, Sam Bradford. Name who had more rushing touchdowns in college, Josh Myers or Michael Carter? What the fuck? <laughs> Five. Well, Michael Four. Carter went to North Carolina. I'm going to go Josh Myers. And Josh Myers is an offensive lineman, so Michael Carter would have been the right answer. You have one you- strike. <laughs> 
should have. I can't believe you picked the offensive lineman. You idiot. Gage is you never know. A lineman can line up as fullback sometimes. <laughs> hey, don't worry. <laughs> if there's Gage is rage for question number two. Yes, yeah, suck it. Who dude. had more passing touchdowns in college, Joshua Bledsoe or Davis Mills? Oh, you're trying to confuse me with the Bledsoe character, so I'm going to take B. You're going to go with Davis Mills? Mills, yeah. The correct the answer is Davis Mills. Oh, Gage is rage. Oh, Gage. Good to go. Round one. One and all, baby. This is Jeopardy. It's a game of the long haul. This number one three. is called Brandon Sucks. Star Lamar. Who had a blows. faster 40 time, Trey Sermon or Liam Eikenberg? I'd, I'm going to go with Sermon. You're going to, and the correct answer would have been Trey Sermon. You Woo! gave him, they got the easy ones. <laughs> is, there Bledsoe is, a court, is, is Bledsoe an actual player? They're all real players. Okay. I was Number four, to, the great Brandino, who has one strike, more career rushing yards in college, Puka Williams or Jonathan Cooper? Puka Williams. Puka Williams would have been the correct answer. What Gages have been? or is is the correct answer? <laughs> okay, all right. Gage's Ridge. Suck yes. Gage. Who had Tied more up. passing touchdowns in 2020, Sam Ellinger or Cade Johnson? Uh, we're gonna go with Ellinger. God, Sam Ellinger would have been the correct answer. Woo! Would have been or is is the correct answer. <laughs> Why do I keep saying would have been? Oh. Number six. Oh. Who had more receiving yards in their college career? Nico Collins or Jordan Scott, Star Lamar? Nico Collins. Nico Collins would have been the correct answer. No, it Dang. is the correct answer. All We're right. On a roll. Number That's seven. Roll. Who had yeah. more sacks in their college career? Tyler Shelvin or Trey McKitty? Great Brandino. I don't know who the second guy is. I'm going to go with Tyler Shelvin. The correct answer is Tyler Shelvin. Defensive Dang. tackle. LSU 2020. Opt-out. This one's a tricky one. Gage is your age. Ooh. Who recorded a faster 40 time? Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase? Oh, those are both real players. This year? This year. That's not fair. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. The game is don't get three strikes. Three strikes and you're out? Correct. Okay. Um, I'm. Hmm. <sighs> You wouldn't put it in here. You wouldn't say that. I'm going to say Pitts. It's Jamar Chase. Chase. Chase ran like a 4-3-4. Jamar Chase had a fast forward time. He ran a 4-3-8. Kyle Pitts ran a 4-4-4. 4-4-4. And it was on the same day. Correct. I was at <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. Shout out. Roar. So Gage's Rage has one strike. The Great Brandino has one strike. Um, Suck it, Trebek. <clears throat> Start to finish round three. Could still pick up a strike and balance it all out. Which I'm one of for. these two players is a safety in the NFL draft? Tolanoa Hufanga or Kendrick Green? Kendrick Green. The correct answer is Toloa Hufango yeah. from USC. Oh, welcome to the we all have club. one strike. <clears throat> if this was bowling, we'd be doing pretty good. <laughs> That's horrible. Number 10. One strike and three tries. Which of these two linebackers had Spare. more sacks in 2020? Chris Evans or Ronnie Perkins? The great Brandino. Perkins is really good pancakes, if that helps you make good choice. Free pie on Monday. They got super good chicken strips, too. I'm going to go with Ronnie Perkins. Ronnie Perkins is a correct answer. Nice. I shouldn't have helped. Well, they got good lunch, lunch too. Their fries are half apps after nine. Get the appetizer sampler. You're welcome. Yeah, good breakfast. Gages are age number 11. Tremendous 12, always. Really? Which of these two Party quarterbacks breakfast. had more passing yards in 2020? Brady Davis or Tyler Coyle? Oh, I'm going to go with Brady Davis because it sounds like a lot like Brady Quinn. Brady Davis is a correct answer. <laughs> number 12. <laughs> Who was, by all accounts, the better tackler in college? Nick Bolton or Hunter Long? Star Lamar. Nick Bolton. That is a dead on answer. Brady Quinn was a really good college quarterback. So you where do you go? What school do you go to? Notre Dame. I knew it though. I knew it too. Just didn't give me time to answer. I'm sorry. Great Brandy. You know. Nick Mangold married his sister. Good for Nick Mangold. Hmm. Don't fact check that though. But it, Scott's running out, I running out of questions. I am running out of questions. I'm running out of questions hard. This was the make fun of Gage game. And it's not turning out how you thought, eh? No, this was a roast you fuckers game. The great Brandino, who had a faster 40 time, Kenneth Gainwell 
or Nico Collins? Nico Collins. Hang on, I gotta look up Kenneth Gainwell's. Kenneth Gainwell does not have top end speed. So you guessed wrong? No, he doesn't. So I guess Nico Collins. Oh. Top end speed and 40 aren't the same. Kenneth Gainwell's pro day, he ran a 4-4-2. Nico Collins ran a 4-4-4. 4-4-4. Yes. 0.02. So, Kenneth Gainwell beats Nico Collins. They're the pretty much has the same. Strike. This that is, is bullshit game. Actually, two hundredths of a second. <laughs> Strike. <laughs> That's our new sounder oh, star. Get that lined up. Oh, and two. Gage's rage. Who had more interceptions in college? Paulson the DeBeo B. or Tommy Tugai? B. 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 It is the first one. Aww. You say Tommy Tugai? <laughs> yes. Defensive tackle, Ohio yeah. State. Oh, nice. Someone Star Lamar. D tackle research. I know my defensive tackle. Sorry, you didn't do it. Star Stop. Lamar. Stop. <laughs> on two. On two. Who gave up more sacks in college? Jackson Carmen or Peyton Turner? Jackson Carmen. You are correct. <sighs> Who gave up more sacks? Like a bad offensive lineman? Who had more sacks? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. No, gave up. Who gave allowed up? More. Oh. Who allowed more? So it was the worst offensive lineman, right? That's the... Correct. Sure. The great Brandino. Who had more tackles in college? James Wiggins or Stone Forsyth? James Wiggins reminds me of Jermaine Wiggins. <laughs> I love the logic. The offensive side of the ball, but his nephew would be on the defensive side of the ball, and the other guy is obviously not. So I'm going to go with James Wiggins. You are correct. The other guy was not a defensive player. What? No, the Stone Forsyth is an offensive tackle. What the fuck? <laughs> James Wiggins is a safety. My logic prevails. <laughs> so here we go, Gage's Rage Did with two you, strikes. This is all set up. Come on now. Who had more <laughs> tackles in college, Tyler Shelvin or Brady Christensen? Their entire career? Yep. You're giving me another Brady name to try and confuse me. <laughs> it's not going to work. I'm taking Brady. He, Brady Christensen is an offensive tackle. tackle. Start it! Start it! Start it! You're out of here! <laughs> and the game works! I just had to dig to the bottom of the list. <laughs> hey, nice job. So these were pretty much all compiled of players of opposite sides of the ball, but I had to get a little bit tricky. <laughs> I definitely I guessed oh, 60%. So that just goes to prove that the exactly. butthole is I high level 100. IQ when it comes to the draft. All right, let's get into my top 100, shall we? Educated Quickly. Guesses, yeah, we'll go in like groups of t- What the fuck? I can't read shit. Well, <clears throat> that's pulled up. The people should be able to read that. We will go on the large. We the people. Do we want to do something like this one? There we go. Then we're visible here on the stream. Oh, okay. All right. Or do we want the big... Uh, well, you, you control that. No, 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 because no, you're doing... No, we don't need to be on the uh, the video. Okay. Scott's number one overall rated player, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, we do eh, want to be on I don't know about that. Number two, Kyle Pitts. <laughs> number three, Penai Sewell. Number four, Jalen Waddle. Ahead of Jamar Chase. I... And love Jalen Waddle. Are you concerned now, about his injury? No. I'm not. That's on his cons list, though. I know. That's just like, it's something to monitor. He's had some injury history. Um, going to my number five overall, Trey Lance. I have Trey Lance rated ahead of Justin Fields because of the potential. When you look at my write up on Trey Lance, NFL pro style offense ran in college. He had all the, he called out all the protections, had a true front to back style out- offense, read system, which means that. Um, long balls he threw he read right away and completed those passes his con would be he only played 17 college starts and he lacks the tape to expose his potential warts so he's definitely the biggest boom bust player I think in this draft even more so than Zach Wilson uh, Jamar Chase comes in at number 6 he's probably going to be the first wide receiver taken just because of his size um, well, he does got have the speed too. Correct. He does have the drops on routine plays for a guy that's his type of hype. When I say that, he, he doesn't have per se drop issues, but he does drop some of the easier passes that should be catchable if you're uh, a top 10 prospect. Stefan Diggs esque? A little bit. 
Uh, I'm going down now down to my number seven prospect, Justin Fields. That puts three quarterbacks in my top seven. Justin Fields I love as a prospect. I feel like uh, TV oversaturation is the reason why he's being picked apart a little bit. When you play all of your games on national TV, it's going to be easy for people to kind of get bored of you. More to pick apart, more to possibly dislike. Exactly. Uh, Player number eight, Rashawn Slater. He's a stud. Rashad Bateman comes in at number nine, a little bit of a surprise. I love Rashad Bateman. I think if he goes to the right fit, some team in the 20s drafts him. He could end up being an absolute star. Do you have gopher bias? Uh, yes. Slight gopher bias, yes. I'd, I'd say he's not in anyone else's top 10. That's not a gopher fan. So, uh, Okay, that's fair. Gopher bias right there. Uh, number 10, I have Elijah Vera Tucker. I love Elijah Vera Tucker. For the Vikings specifically, I would actually prefer him over, I think, Rashawn Slater. Um, when you turn on his tape, uh, he actually shows extremely good balance with his uh, – um, he, he also has the short arm issue that they talk about with Shasan Slater, but Elijah Vera Tucker does a lot better job of keeping his hands inside, which helps out when you're labeled as a short arm uh, offensive lineman. When you keep your hands inside and completely change your stance as you go, his balance is elite. He played guard and tackle in college, and he was actually uh, all American at both positions. He was third team all American as a junior in college. And as a senior in college, he was first team all American and he won um, the best tackle in the Pac-12 last year. Now, mind you, Panay Sewell did not play. He opted out. To your point of arms, you they say if a tackle has issues getting his arms like being too wide, they put him in a doorway to try and block. And if their arms go outside of the doorway, you're going to get hurt. Yep. Just so they, bullied. Yeah, so keep your arms <laughs> on the inside versus outside because then the guys are going to come through and push your arms back up against the door. Yep. So that way you're going to break your shoulders. And Tucker does a great job of keeping his hands in the doorway. How do they get all these doorways in on the field? Uh, they do it in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Maybe kind of like uh, in Scott's garage where we did Oklahoma drills. They kind of have <laughs> different setups for things. Like quarter, a good quarterback wouldn't break a light. <clears throat> That's true. This is when you started to care about defensive players. And a good wide receiver would have Yeah, this is the pretty much short the I didn't draft have to from that throw point it forward. towards the light. Uh, you go into my now when you're talking 11 through 20, it's almost all defense. There's only one offense, two offensive tackles in my top uh, from 11 to 20. Tevin Jenkins, I have rated pretty high at 17 overall. Christian Derrissaw, I have at 12. Christian Derrissaw does have a little bit of a work ethic issue. When you turn on the tape and watch him, he is and he does end up uh, watching a lot of plays happen as he kind of gives up on it early. Uh, go to the defensive edge rush side of the football. There's a lot of good edge rushers in this class. Pre- specifically, I actually have Aziz Ojolari rated as my number one, but he's a 3-4 guy, so a lot of the teams that are picking in the top 18 aren't necessarily 3-4 schemes that are edge rusher specific. He'll probably be a top 20, or uh, sorry, a 20 to 30 pick, but I, he is my favorite um, <clears throat> prospect, specifically because his cross chop is already an elite move, and if you add a couple moves on top of that, he's going to be a great edge rusher in the NFL. Uh, Quiddy Pie actually made the note of Everson Griffin type of motor. If you turn on the tape and watch Quiddy Pie play, his motor is next level, and it's an NFL style motor. Uh, he has a lot of go. He does lack a little bit of athleticism. Um, you move on to Jalen Phillips. I like everything about Jalen Phillips' game except for his concussions, which you can't overlook. He probably would be my number one if it wasn't for those concussions. And then, of course, he um, also retired at one point. So your quarterbacks, I see you have Sertain at 14, Horn at 16, and Farley at 19. Yep. So they're all really close together. Are they fairly interchangeable for you? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, the reason I like Sertain the most is because um, basically his his only question is top end speed and quick twitch, which <clears throat> when you look at Caleb Farley, you're talking injuries being his issue. Yeah. Yep. Patrick Sertain, if he's put into the right position, he won't be. Uh, those won't be exposed. Yeah, with the right coaching, he could definitely yep. overcome. Now, one thing you have to note regarding Sertan is you can't teach speed. You either have it or you don't. The other two have the speed. Sertan's a little bit questioned on that. Farley, um, too. Um, he obviously, you, you have on here, he had the ACL, the back injury, so he missed his pro day. He was an opt-out in 2020. Um, he also doesn't have a lot of experience at cornerback either. I think that's true. he's got two, maybe three years. Yep. He was a wide receiver and I think a quarterback, quarterback in high school. Converted. Yep. Yep. And then converted and he transferred from some, I think, Western school to go to Virginia Tech. Yes. 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the school he transferred from. I can't think of it off the top of my head. JC Horn, however, he's an interesting prospect. A lot of people haven't been talking about him because he's slowly been creeping up the board. But my notes on him when I st- turned on the tape was he's truly an alpha. He has the um, he has the swagger to if you were to plug him into a uh, defensive back end, he could be the identity of that team's back end, which most teams picking in the top 18, they need that at cornerback. They need a cornerback to come in and take over the room. Um, <clears throat> he has quick feet. He's good on his initial hand jams, even though he didn't have any turnover production in his final year in college. He is an attacker of the football when it's in the air. <clears throat> Some cons regarding him, his grabbiness at the top of routes could be an issue for him at the next level. A lot of times in the NFL, rookie cornerbacks have issues with that anyways. Um, but then you also have no real turnover production until his final season. So really with him, it's, is he able to make the plays on the ball in the air? I personally feel like he will at the NFL level, and it could end up being a reason why he's, um, taken as the second or third cornerback. And he could end up being the steal of the steal of the draft. Um, Jalen Phillips, we went through already. Najee Harris, I have at number 20. He's, I think the best running back in the class. He's a true three down running back. 6'2", 230 pounds. He's a little bit lighter version of Derrick Henry. He is faster, and he also has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield. Now, he's fast, but from what I've read on him, um, he doesn't have that burst right away. So he's a little bit slower to get going. And that's where the Derrick Henry comparison comes in. Derrick Henry doesn't have that pop off the top either, but if he gets going, look out. Um, Where else are we going here? Oh, Jeremiah owusu Koromo. we talked about being a true safety kind of linebacker hybrid. If he goes into the right defense, I love him as a prospect. Um, moving down, we'll go to Zayvon Collins now, who's at number 25 overall. I love Zayvon Collins as a guy to go to like Cleveland where he could be the true identity of their defense and take it over as the field general. Um, Let's move to Kadarius Toney, who I have as my fifth overall wide receiver, 28th player. The reason I love him going to Green Bay is because of his ability to play out of the slot and become an extension of the run game, who they tried to use. I don't remember the guy's name last year as that. MVS? No. Alan Lazard? No, he was lower on their... I think he was actually technically a running back. Irvin. Irvin. Tyler Irvin. Kadarius Toney could absolutely be that Tyler Irvin role, but effective as hell in that Green Bay offense. I really hope they don't draft him. (laughs) For Minnesota State? Um, what about Jameen Davis? You have him at 27. Yeah. So Jameen Davis, if you look at him, he benefited greatly from a pro day, um, from the pro day circuit after cutting awesome numbers, he's primed to be drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. He plays with a very calculated and almost never wastes movements, which in the NFL, it's a big deal. If your linebackers have no wasted movements, because generally they're the ones that have to plug the gaps. I love him. I don't know that he will go in the first round, but he's definitely a first round grade in my book. He is truly a 4-3 linebacker, though. He could be a 3-4 insider, I guess, but it, I'm just not sure that his position is going to warrant a first-round pick out of him. And you had Greg Newsome at 24, so he was your fourth-ranked cornerback in this draft. That's Obviously, correct. 24 to 19, even 24 to 14 isn't that far away. Yep. Um, is there a tier gap between these guys? Uh, to be honest, I think there is not. I think those four could be bracketed into the same tier. Uh, I do think Asante Samuel Jr. would be the next tier down, and I would almost put him in a tier of his own. I think he's a true clear-cut next guy on the list. Um, because if you look at my rankings, he's 33rd overall in my fifth corner. And if you go down a little ways, I don't think the next corner comes up until it's a little ways down. It's probably in the 50s somewhere. 55. Yeah. Or wait. 62. 62. Sorry. Also an abdu- a debut. A debut. Yeah. 60 overall. So, um, one thing I, I noticed, and I'm not trying to cut you off, but you had, uh, Browning, Baron Browning, Ohio State, um, ahead of players like Trayvon Morig, Asai, Sermon. Is there a reason you like him so much? 29 yeah. seems just a little high for him. Yep. So here's where we go. So Browning never had the luxury of setting into one position in college. Um, as OSU had him play uh, all different positions at the linebacker, he played off the ball, rushing linebacker. They made Browning do, made him be a do it all, which could make him benefit greatly at the NFL level. I think he's a more dynamic player coming out of college than the players that you mentioned, especially um, uh Like if you're talking Trey Sermon or you're talking go down a little bit further. Trevon Morig is obviously 32, so those two are close. 
uh, Gregory Rizzo, for instance, Landon Dickerson. I I don't think he's going to get drafted ahead of these guys, but I do think he's a more NFL ready prospect. He benefited greatly playing for Ohio State, where he played all those different positions because he's very flexible coming into the NFL. I have Trey Sermon as my third rated running back. Some of that is due to Matt Waldman talking. Trey Sermon was also a sleeper of mine, to be honest, coming into the draft, um, where now the cat's out of the bag, especially being we have plenty of people that I compete in fantasy leagues with uh, that listen to the show as well as um, partake in the butthole podcast. So the cat's out of the bag with Trey Sermon. Just a long con. He was trying to talk him down for quite a while. No, like, I never ah, talked Sermon, Trey Sermon down. Sermon runs kind of clunky, can't <laughs> catch, not very good. I never like, said a negative thing about Trey Sermon. Yeah, he's got no cons in your list. Yeah. Fair. Uh, Javonta Williams is not too far away. He's the next pick down, 35. I think he's a solid pick, too. Um, I think those two rank out right next to each other. Uh, Waldman has Sermon as his number one over Najee Harris, but um, I would I would probably go Harris. Sermon Etienne. I don't know where I'd rank them in a hundred list, but I would just swap that around. But yeah, I mean, they're really not that far away to be that much of a difference. It's not going from 34 to 70. Where was Etienne? I know Najee was like 20, Etienne was 26, six. Yeah. Okay. I do want to note too, regarding Trevon Morig, if you go up to him really quick, I'd like to read my right up on him. So in a week group, uh, for this year's NFL draft, Ravon Morag has managed to stand out and be truly a shining light. He's versatile, and the main reason why is he's capable of playing coverage or coming up and holding his own in the box. The reason I mention him as a possibility for the Vikings in our uh, mock draft that we did in episode 222 is because he would truly unleash Harrison Smith's ability to come up and play inside the box, and then Morag would be your over-the-top safety. I don't love him as a pick for the Vikings, but if the draft happens to fall the way that it did in our mock draft, I think he would be a feasible option because he is clearly the best safety in the class. Um, he does need to improve on his angles when he's attacking downhill. Uh, but I think that's something that can certainly be taught. Uh, continued down. I personally love Gregory Rizzo. I think he's getting a little bit of a bad rap as being an end of the second projected pick. When you look at him, uh, his, his size alone, he's six foot five, 260 pounds. Uh, he's a converted wide receiver in safety. He has the athleticism and size that's rare at his position. For a linebacker, he's not overly explosive, but his size is enough to really get after the quarterback and also hold up and run pursuit and gap control. He reminds me a lot, to be honest, of you, uh, uh, of like Jadavian Clowney. Doesn't have the top athleticism, but he's going to be a very, very effective player in the NFL. Uh, Jadavian Clowney is pretty damn athletic. Yeah, powerhouse. Clowney too. doesn't have, he is not known as a speed guy, though. But it wasn't his 40, like, at least top three. At the it has not translated in into the NFL. Pop the shit out of that guy in college? Look up Gregory Rizzo's 40 time. His 40 time's not that bad either. Well, yeah, he was a wide receiver. Yeah. Back in the day. <clears throat> Jadavion was a 4-5-3. That's not that great. I mean, it's not bad. I, I sound like I'm ripping Jadavion Clowney. <laughs> I don't want to sound like that. No, no, no. I don't I, think unathletic. Rizzo not... was a 4-5-6. So... But when you look at some of the top guys in this class, there's uh, some insane. You no have way. what's his name that ran Wait, a four three eight? No, nope, yeah. it was four six eight. Sorry, Jalen Phillips was four five six. So that's fair. Second. But Jadavian Clowney's had injuries and stuff. He's not the same guy that he was when he came in. Um, let's move down to my first interior defensive lineman. I have Christian Barrymore. Uh, I don't have that much to say about him. He's most people's first overall, so we don't have to get too far into it. I would like to note Levi own, own Anzarike. Anzarike, I have as the number two. I love him as a three tech prospect at the NFL level, and I would be absolutely in love if the Vikings got their hands on him if they were to acquire a second round pick. He did opt out of 2020, so he didn't have the um, we didn't see those reps, but he looked really good in 2019. I actually I have him higher than Barmore. Mostly because Anzarike is a much better run defender. He doesn't have the stats rushing the passer, but as a three technique, you're not necessarily going to get the sacks like you would an edge rusher. Mm -hmm. I think he had like two sacks and three sacks, so like five total in the two years that he started. Um, but Barmore, one of the things is he wasn't even a consistent starter at Alabama. Mm. And he really came on. He had a really good uh, championship game. 
and he's really good at rushing the passer, but his pass de- but his pass defense or his uh, rush defense is not not that great. So he definitely needs he's a, a very good athlete, but um, when I'm looking at interior defensive line, I want guys that can stuff that line. We like people that can stuff that line. He does better at third down uh, or obvious passing downs. Stuff it. Moving down the board here, we got Dylan Radunes. I love the prospect of Dylan Radunes. He never came off the field after he tore his ACL in his freshman year. Radunes is a warrior and a man who protected Trey Lance's blind side extremely well, whether it was at tackle or guard in Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, his downside is play strength and leverage with his weight are a concern. He'll need to bulk up a bit and hit the weight room. That's the exact same cons that we saw for uh, Brian O'Neill and for Ezra Cleveland. I think Dylan Radunes would fit in perfectly in purple. Uh, moving on to Jason Away, who I have as my 43rd overall sixth rank edge rusher. I have an issue with what you said about him. Radunes? No. Jason Away. Okay. Because it's more of like an English problem. Because in the first one, it says the definition of trust the traits. Yep. And then in the next one, it says definition of boomer bust. So which one is it? Yeah, so when you're talking about him as a prospect, he has all the measurables. He's 6'5", 258, and he's he had, uh, ran a 4'3", 40 time. Uh, he has all the tools to be a force. He plays the run well already also. He's a very, very, very raw prospect. So when you're talking trust the traits, you're drafting him because of what he measured out at on the combine and on his pro day, not because of production on the field. That's exactly what I meant by that. I just don't understand how he can have two definitions. Yeah, so if you're drafting him, it's because you want to trust his traits. You want to trust the fact that he's 6'5", 258, and ran 4'3", 40. But if you're drafting him, that's why you're drafting him. You're not drafting him based on production. You could also start similar to the word poop. You know, fecal matter out of your asshole and or lube. I was going to go gauge is the definition of blowing a Madden lead, but he's also the definition of being decent enough at Madden to get a lead. Sure. I was going to go with like, okay, at Fortnite, but oh. however you want to place that. I Definition just got a of whiff of lube. Cartoon. You guys smell that? <laughs> now, every time Sorry, I Sorry, I'll fart. close my legs. <laughs> All righty. All right, number 100. <laughs> Moving on now, we'll jump down to um, number... Who's one of you guys that's like the highest uh, after 50 that is kind of surprising? We'll move down past 50, and I'll tell you. We were right there, weren't we? Like so interior offensive lineman right at that 50 range. That Your next two safeties come in, Javon Holland and Richie Grant, 51, 53. They're kind of that next tier after Morig. Um, oh, sheesh. Actually, never mind. You got freaking Mac Jones way down here. Why is that? Yeah, because honestly, in my opinion, Mac Jones is a second-round grade as a talent, but he'll go top five, top ten just because he's a quarterback. quarterback need. Yeah. So he's probably the biggest surprise as far as I have him so low. I personally don't love the the um I just don't love the traits with Mac Jones. When you look at what he did in college last year, he had arguably the best running back in college, best receiving core in college, best offensive line in college. Put him on a team in the top five and let's see him produce. Well, he's gonna possibly have three other offensive teammates that are going in the first round, maybe four if Landon Dickerson goes. And what you're saying, top five, you mean the top five picks, so worst five teams in the in the league. That's correct, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't beat him up too bad, actually, on his traits, but Mac Jones is, I don't, I didn't put this top 100 together because everybody needed to see what I said about Mac Jones. Everybody sure. knows what the people are saying about him. He's accurate as hell. He knows how to read a defense. A lot of scouts are saying he's the smartest guy in, uh, to come out in forever. Like ever, I've seen that. Yeah, I um, saw that he is like over prepared. Yeah, he has a fear of not being prepared, and it like eats at him. Yeah, a lot of two thirty in the middle of the night phone calls, which is not always a good thing. No, want- that was um, uh, cool. Laquan motherfucking Treadwell, always trying to train and prep, running stairs after games. When Work smarter, been not harder. I should have been counting seven <clears throat> steps. Hey, see, that's the issue at the butthole. We're just always over prepared. Yeah, some Always of the bad about being <clears throat> under prepared. prepared. Yeah, like, some of the bad things yeah. I said regarding Mac Jones is lack of athleticism in the jer- in the jersey he wore hurt him, meaning his Alabama jersey. Um, like let's physically does uh does the jersey. underwhelming performance by Tua last year hurt him? 
I don't think so because they're such different quarterbacks. But you got to remember, too, Tua was coming off a bad hip injury. Um, I don't think the Dolphins will know what they have in Tua Tagovailoa by about week eight this year, and they'll know if they need to draft a quarterback or not. Let's remember, though, the Dolphins will have the draft capital next year to do that. Yep. So let's scroll Uh, down. One thing that I really fucked up on, in my opinion, which will be easy to nitpick, is Elijah Moore at 12. I should have put him more around that wide receiver seven or six range. you guys can just beat me up over it. You idiot. Yeah. It's a great number. So that's actually why you did it. He's you like 71? 669. Oh, you're on the oh, item column. So that's why you did it. Yeah. Nice. I just think like it's actually the best pick outside of the top five. Yeah. I mean, Why when you look at my pros I wrote in for the other guys, so Dwayne Eskridge, this is quite honestly a wide receiver class that makes you want to... I'm glad I don't have any hair because I would have pulled my fucking hair out after watching these guys. Dwayne Eskridge, you look at him, he has strong hands, seasoned route running, has the ability to play as well... Or Sorry, play all receiver positions, which serves him well. He has a very high level of effort in the run game, blocks very willingly. One of the better run blockers in the class. His downside is injuries. Move on to my number 57 ranked, 11 overall. One above Elijah Moore as far as the position rank, Tillon Wallace. Aligned in the Z and generally played in the right side, only Tillon Wallace will fit into a high-profile air raid style NFL offense very well. So it's kind of one of those where Elijah Moore could be as high as your wide receiver four. He could be as low as your wide receiver, probably 12, which is where I have him. But it doesn't mean that he's going to be a boom or bust, whether he gets drafted as the fourth or 12th wide receiver. These wide receivers are big time into uh, where they get drafted and the, and the um, um, I guess you'd say the opportunity that's presented to them. Elijah Moore has all the skills, though, to be an absolute star. At 73 there, I see it. Afetu Melifanu. Yeah. Is that, I'm assuming, the brother of Obi? I did not read that regarding no. him. That would be something we should look up, though. Is he a, a athletic freak? Yeah. Yes and no. I mean, he doesn't jump off the paper. Pull up his measurables, Brandon. I know you're going to hate having to type in that name. <clears throat> He's 6'3", 214 pounds. I, my, my Google search wouldn't even pull it up. 21 years That's old. That's how off I was. So this is the guy that I believe I had the Vikings drafting in my mock draft. He has he reminds me a lot of Cam Dantzler, to be honest, coming out of college last year. He's got the size. He's meant to be an outside corner. He, I don't think his 40 time was great, although 40 times are a little bit tough this year. He just reminds me of the type four, of guy four, that... Four four eight. So he ran a decent forty. I don't remember what Dantzler ran. That's probably similar. Vertical of forty one and a half. It's pretty good. So how tall is he? Again? If his brother is who I think Six it two. is from a few years ago, just physical specimen, overdrafted, I believe, by the Raiders, yep. and never panned out because if, he they, he just could jump out of the building, run faster than everyone, and was huge. Everyone thought he was going to be like the Cam Chancellor. <clears throat> Didn't end up being that, but. You Maybe are the totally little brother. Correct. It is his brother. If Melifamu uh, is drafted at 73, I don't think there's any downside to picking him at 73. No. Yeah. Uh, Cause what would that be? Third round? Yeah. 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 Mid, mid third round, roughly. Yeah. Uh, so we'll scroll down here. We could probably share this so other people can look at it. Yeah. We can have share it view only. So we'll, we'll put this on our socials so you guys can look through it at your own leisure and pace. Um, we're getting down. Here's the last. 25 picks the last thing i would say regarding these last 25 picks is my gopher blood got me to put ben st Just in at cornerback 12 overall he's my number 92 ranked prospect i like him a lot as a guy in the late third early fourth round i also like deontay brown his size a lot uh he's my number 99 rated overall prospect i got a lot of linemen defensive and offensive in the last 50 I did end up winding, uh, making Davis Mills my 95th overall rated prospect. I like him a lot, depending on where he goes. I think he'd be a great uh, option to get drafted somewhere where he would sit behind a starter for a year or two um, to a team that is overpaying a quarterback and is ready to move off that contract eventually. Mm -hmm. Kafkoff Vikings. You also see uh, Bashman Jr. here, Quincy Roche. Is it Roche? Roche? It's Roche. Roche. Uh, both of those could be solid guys. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell down here towards the bottom as well. Um, a lot of people like him too, but I know Matt Waldman was a little bit more down on him as well. Yep. 
Um, Tyler Shelvin, Jay Tufeli, Alim McNeil, those are all really good interior defensive linemen. None of them, like everybody's been saying, the interior defensive line is not like packed with jump at you, explosive, athletic freak talent, but there is some decent depth in there. And those three guys are all bigger run stuffers. Shelvin, I think, probably has high potential. Um, but that McNeil dude is he's he's a big boy. Yes. I would also add in this um in these last 25, I love Ronnie Perkins as a 97 overall fourth round projection guy. He's a very solid linebacker who could end up being a really solid four three guy. Um I also uh I love as a prospect Brady Christensen. I think he could be a very good offensive tackle at the NFL level. 97 <laughs> might still be third round. It would be with compensatory, with compensatory You're right. picks. Yes. I think the third round goes damn near to 100, 100. or even past 100. Yeah, yep. it does. Depending. Depending yeah. on the year. Yep. So um, I so, guess I would also say Tommy Tremble. We mentioned off cast from Notre Dame. I like as a tight end a lot. Good tackler. Yep. Or blocker. Very good tackler. Uh, he tackles well. I actually kind of watching this tight end class. I kind of like these tight ends. I really do. Brevin Jordan reminds me a lot of Irv Smith. And he's actually a, a little more athletic too. Whoa! Um, I mean, that that's when you find tight ends is when you least expect it. Yeah, they. Had I don't. Baltimore know. Ravens drafted Hayden Hurst, thinking he's going to be their star. They said, "Ah, oh, let's pick up another one just in case." And Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews is still on the team. George Kittle was a middle round guy. Um, yeah, wasn't Hayden Hurst like the second, and Mark was like the fourth? Or Hayden the Hurst was a first. He was. Yeah, a, he was he the was end of picked, the first. He was picked before Lamar Jackson. Damn. In the same draft as him. They drafted Hayden Hurst and then traded back up for Lamar Jackson. Hayden Hurst, I believe, also suffers from like major depression and everything too. So I don't know if that had something to do with, you know, going through spurts of having issues and whatnot too. Mm-hmm. I'm sure being drafted that high if you have those issues isn't good for you. Like I'm sure it puts a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah, yep. definitely. Um, what else is there? That's about it, honestly, for this top one hundred. It was fun to do next year. I think I'm gonna do it earlier so I can update it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was fun to do. Versions. Took yeah, me about I'm 10 sure days. We'll rip on it Thursday night during the draft. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many of the top 100 I actually hit on. You would assume I'll hit 70, right? Because even if my number 70 prospect gets picked 100, it's still technically a hit. Yeah. So well, I'll probably hit 70 of the top 100. Yeah, let's keep the, track of it. We should. We'll keep a percentage tally on it. That's what you're thinking with this. It's uh, how it's drafted board. Not no, draft. this is just literal prospects. That's why Mac Jones was my number yeah, 64. 60, yeah, yeah. Will, will you give me? Well, I think we get in this a little bit. How 75? Long? A butthole bet? No, I don't want to do that. How long before you can look back at this draft and rank the players how they actually perform in, in the NFL? I would say give three it, years. Yeah, is a good you have race. to give it a couple years to let them fit into the system, become starters, possibly things like that. For sure. God, 75. Come on, take it. You put 10 days on this, man. I'm thinking 67 and a half. Give it 69. You said 70. That's where I was starting this, and then I moved it to 75. 67 and a half would be the number. Scott negotiates. Like me playing Monopoly. Think about it. That rounds out the butthole top 100, officially my top 100, not officially butthole endorsed, but Gage endorses it. So yeah, I saw matters. Rashad Bateman at nine, and I said my name can't be on this list. <laughs> hey, that's a hell of a Scott is repping in a ruining gold butthole shirt. Like, I'm not saying a little bit of home here, but. And you put a ton of work into it that I didn't do. So good for you. But I just got a click that. in the mic. You guys get that? We yeah, all yeah. did. Yeah. And yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Once you get to those like 50s and below, it's tough. You have no idea where teams are ranked because then people are drafting off a need and not position. A lot of people aren't taking BPA. 50 to 100 is the reason that I'm not about taking a bet on it because once you get into that range in the NFL draft, it can be a crapshoot. You never have no idea. And there's always that first pick, day three, the first like. Ten picks, even. They're like, how did this That's guy when still every, get here? Yeah, how are they still available? And Trades. everyone's trading up, and some of them continue to can drop, and like, then you learn there's something wrong with them. And Quincy Roche, I've seen as high as third round pick. I've seen as low as like fifth, sixth round pick. 
and not drafted. I mean, too. even there'll be some undrafted players on that list. I'm betting that by at the end of the draft, at least one people on that list will not be drafted. It's it always happens possible. like that. Would you take a bet with Scott for five? No. Hey, really quick of the first round picks, who's going to be the one that gets some damning uh, thing come out on them on Thursday morning? No, no, better yet. How many of them get damning f- reports about them Thursday morning? Because you know there'll be at least one. I don't know. Five. The limit on morning. I don't mean my I don't mean my top one hundred list. I'm just talking about the first round projected players. Who gets the weed gas mask? Pre draft yeah. or just in the morning? Pre draft. From now to when the draft starts, who's gonna have some bad news stuff come out on them? I'll put it multiple. I'll go two. Two. Uh Mac Jones. Yankee's just a terrible human. No, I don't. But I know he had the Obama mask with the no Obama sash. And I think that could come out to create some waves for him. But it already came out. You already know about it. Yeah, Yeah. it's already out. Just saying. The Tunsil gas mask was that was out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's saying. Tunsil. I mean, the field seizure thing, if it would have hung in there a little bit longer, would have been a damning evidence. I thing. was under the impression that teams knew about that. They did, they but did. it just hadn't hit reporters until yeah, when it came out. That teams were aware. I don't know. Josh Allen had some draft day stuff happen to him. Chick from Buffalo Bills likes taking those quarterbacks. You know there's going to be one or two. Yeah. yeah, just I'm sure, but people are learning. People are scrubbing their Twitters and they're just staying off it all together. Yeah, they, they know for- that people don't forget and if it's on the Internet. It's forever. And it's also they're, tough they're to learning. Grow up in that spotlight being a fucking dumbass kid. Yeah, it's not even growing up. You were making those comments when you weren't in the spotlight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. when you're 14, just dicking off with your friends. I don't know what you're doing with your friends, but well, I mean, some of them well, were you were like di- you were dicking off rap in college. lyrics and shit like that. Yeah, like I don't know if I had a spotlight on me with a, a trackable, searchable device. <laughs> Get your VPNs. <laughs> <laughs> Poop is go. I don't know. Poop I'm excited. Poop this is, is like <laughs> fucking Christmas for me. This is like Christmas. I tweeted I'm that this morning. Nice this is literally Christmas week to. right here. Yeah. Let's go. The NFL draft, I don't think I get as excited for anything NFL related as the NFL draft besides week one and a potential playoff berth matchup for the Vikings and then obviously playoff games. Oh, if the on. Vikings aren't in the playoffs, I don't get as excited for playoff football as I do the NFL draft. Now, one of those includes fantasy football that doesn't hit your football. Well, that's a different okay, different thing. beast. Yeah. yeah. The NFL I'll be right. honest with you. Fantasy football, that opening weekend, I'm super excited about and it's fun. But like it's a grind. I, I don't get like the pure joy out of it because it's always like you're working to make sure that you got your roster uploaded. I love it to death, but you it's just a different You don't have to make feeling. 100 trades before the season starts. I either. don't do that generally, dude. 105. Generally. All that work to get third place. <laughs> and with that, go jerk off. I still Check smell out our lube. Check website, www. Like lube. Poop is lube. Poop is lube. on all socials at official butthole. Please leave us a rating. Just and getting whips. Apple music. Oh, dude, I've been we'll see you next time. Night. <laughs> yeah. No. If I did, you you wouldn't be sitting there. I have a pretty strong tolerance. God, boys, this yeah. is such a big week. I'm excited to see what we get for a little We should talk to Paul and see what Ernest got last year. For views. I'm sure we can find it somewhere. Because it was into the lab that covered the draft for them. Draft last yeah. year. Check out BCMG, blue color MG.com. I think it was successful.